Christmas is over, normal service resumes. And today we are revisiting Garai in this Mazda RX Source. Bet you didn't see that one come in. But before we get into today, I just want to go and say make sure to subscribe, like, it's almost the end of the decade. Ten years. It's a long time. I'm just really struggling of things to say today. Uh, it's, it's the day after Christmas when I'm recording this. We're all a bit hungover. Uh, but hey, we're gonna fucking do this anyway. Right, Scully Rem, let's go ahead and customize this RX-7. Now, this specific car, I actually have already used it. Not for racing, though, for drifting. And we're gonna go look through all the parts. I actually might make this into a Rocket Bunny car because I don't often do that on the channel nowadays. Obviously, Sleepy Eyes, pretty fucking cool. Yeah, this car has a lot of options. Um, The RX-7 was a car that actually has and ha it has had a lot of options ever since I can remember really my main complaint as per usual there's no subtle parts everything is absolutely bonkers you want a big rear arch have a bigger one. Uh, I actually don't know what I want to do with it. Part of me kind of wants to keep it stock, but because there's so much customization, I kind of don't want to keep it stock. I'm going to go and customize it, and then I'll be back in a minute. Boom! It hasn't been lowered yet, so we're going to go ahead and quickly do that now. I have no clue. Is this even on bags? It's already on bags, and it only goes that low. Wow. We're going to have to sort out that front camera a little bit, because that looks... Disgusting. Bruh. So if I want it to kind of look a little bit normal, I really got to camber out that front wheel and it still doesn't really look that normal. So we're just going to keep that nice and tough. What kind of look was I going for here? Kind of underground one-y, kind of a little bit, but not really underground one. I still want it to look a little bit modern. We're also going to go ahead and look for some wraps as well. I'm not actually going to put the noise bomb one on that you're probably thinking that I'm going to put on. So obviously, uh, as is expected, that gets a bruh moment. Can I get a bruh, please? Bruh. That actually gets a bruh. And an Instagram sound effects. Can I get both of those, please? Bruh. The second most popular, uh, I mean, it's a little bit better, but uh, carry on scrolling along. Uh, I'm sorry, that's nice and clean actually, but I can do that in like two seconds, so I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna pick that one. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, uh, there's not, they're not actually that fantastic. This. Oh my god, let's go back one. I like how we kept a spot for the for the driver so you can see out. That's a little bit better. That that actually would take ages to make, so I can really, really respect that. Like that actually free. But it is a little bit typical. I kinda wanna go for something a little bit different today. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I know I wanted to say I was gonna do something a little bit different, but oh my god. That looked really good. I know I said I was going to do something a little bit different, but that is really tickling my fancy right now. The Pro Street RX-7. I need attention! Give me attention! Right, anyway, I'm going to go quickly consult the comments to see what engine I should put in this. And then we're going to go ahead, have a few practice laps, then take this on the infamous... Spectacular! Gary! <laughs> cool, so according to the comments of the last video, you guys told me to use the forged rotary. So we're gonna see how that performs today. Where am I expecting this car to land? I'm honestly not expecting much from the RX-7. I don't think it's ever been a car in Need for Speed that has been like ridiculously good or anything. We're also gonna quickly just add some green neon, not the step neon. Just the wave, that wave, because I'm wavy. wavy. I'm a wavy guy. Right, so let's go ahead and look. So we've got plenty of options on this car. We've got eight. Uh, we've got the Wanko Wanko. That's the normal, the not forged one. We've got V8, another V8, uh, V6, which that might be a little bit nutty in this car, actually. Uh, flat six, forged Wanko, which is the one we're going to be using. A V6 and a V8. Now, I've got a feeling the V6 is in this car. They actually might be a little bit insane. But just because of your recommendations, we're going to go ahead and use this rotary. I've noticed that rotaries aren't actually that fast in this game. Um, maybe that's just me um, from what I've noticed, but I haven't really noticed any rotary cars be really, really fast other than the MX-5, but I guess that doesn't really count because the Porsche engine is actually faster in that car. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, upgrade the whole thing. With a clap of my fingers, it will change. Three, two, one. Oof. Oh, just fucking... Oh my god. People seem to think I do that on purpose. That is genuinely me not doing it on purpose. I was about to make a witty joke then about how I came off the screen and came on the screen, but now because my eye hurts, I'm not going to do that. So, uh, for those that want to see the stats, because I know there is those lots of people in these videos, there you go, you can see that it actually doesn't reach 
1,000 horsepower, but it does reach a 0.6 time of 2.3 seconds and 234 miles per second. Now, the RX-7 in this game is actually the best drift car in the game. Um, for those that didn't already know, like, it's better than any other car by far. It's the RSR of drift cars. You can definitely tell that by the handling. Oh, my God, it is very slidey. I'm going to go ahead and make sure the live tuning is all the way on here. I would actually compare this quite similar to the S15 we used in the last video. Yeah, we seem to go through phases on the channel. So, like, obviously, we went kind of through the hypercar phase where we did loads of hypercars. Now, we're going through all the JDM tuners. This handles quite similar to the S15, actually. Ah! Like, if you can handle the fact that it gets its back end out a little bit, it probably would be quite fast. Like, it feels quite fast, especially on the rotary of all cars. Like, yeah, if you can keep the car planted, control the throttle well, I reckon it actually wouldn't be too fast. Like, Takes corners very, very well. Like, oof. Nowhere near as hard to use as the S15 was. Where is it going to land on Gary, though? I'm not so sure. I would not be surprised if it landed quite similar to the S15. Definitely faster than the Evo because you can actually take this around corners. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, my God. That was going in way too fast. Pleasantly surprised by Mr. Ryan Cooper, a.k.a. Player. 2020 is the year of the gamer. <laughs> right then, so with that being said, I think it is time to get it on to Rebel. Where is this gonna land? I have absolutely no clue. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take an educated guess and say similar to the S15. I also want to quickly say that obviously the RSR and the Pista need to be retested. I'm gonna be doing a retest episode at some point very, very soon. So uh yeah, just want to let you guys know that that will be happening. At the moment, I think I'm gonna do the Evo 9, the RSR, and the Pista. Maybe a few others as well. We'll see what happens. I've obviously got a little bit better in the game, if you know what I'm saying. I really do be out here grinding, making them gamer gains. <laughs> now, what we're going to do before we get into the race, because this is really annoying me, is we're going to fix that back window, because clearly my, my player inside is getting a bit chilly. Right, well, let's see where this lands then. Um, fingers crossed we can do this on the first lap. Cars that handle well are rewarded on this track for those that didn't already know. Bruh. Uh, right, we're going to dip and weave. Noodles, please get out of the way. Big Barb. Oh, Big Bob knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Now, I actually didn't mess up as I was going to that corner. I did go straight into a barrier, but I just want to get a lap in. I just want to get to grips with the car on this track. This is definitely not going to be a fast lap. I've just already crashed into two barrels. It handles very, very good, actually. I think on twisty, tiny, tiny corners, this is actually going to be a really good car. Where it lacks compared to the, you know, the F40s, the Huayras, the Russos, it's the acceleration, really. But that might be down to the engine. Like, I reckon if you put a V6 in this, this might be a little bit nutty. There's a lot of cars that are kind of good in the middle of the pack. That's one common thing I'm finding uh, as I'm doing more and more rare bear times is that there's a lot of cars that are just in the middle of the pack. And then the difference between like the RSR, you know, the F40, etc. Like the gap between those cars and the rest of them is so big. We've got the RSR, which will will eventually be seconds in the, in the lead. To the F40 and the Huayra, which are like seconds faster than the MX-5, for example. The gap between the cars is so big. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to skip this because I've kind of got a feel for the car now. Um, and I've also messed up at least four times. We're going to see what we can do here. Let's, um... Bottoms up, bottoms up. This one, this lap right here. It's for the boys. Yeah, so where the car lacks with, you know, in straight line speed, definitely makes up with in the corners. Although you can kind of definitely tell it is set up more to be a drift car. Well, it is obviously the best drift car in the game. So I don't know what else I was fucking expected. Maybe I should do a Gary type like list of cars for drifting as well. Like, let me know if you want to see that. I've been thinking about maybe doing that. Like, I have the kind of Drift Gary series, and then maybe we, we name that leaderboard something different and do a bunch of drift cars. If that's something you do want to see, it's a Netflix original. Quite weird. Obviously, this is the RX-7. It's the Wankel Forged engine, but unlike real life, it doesn't actually rev to 9K. It revs to 7. I just thought that was Bruh. really... What was I even talking about before I got crashed out? I was talking about something semi-important, and I just completely forgot. Oh, I know what I was talking about now. So obviously the rotaries in real life, I don't know whether it's the same on race rotaries. But I'm pretty sure it must be uh, because it's one of the like 
main characteristics of the car. They rev up all the way to nine grand in real life, but it only revs up to seven in the game. I'm not saying that I was expecting Need for Speed to be awfully realistic, because you can still put camera shafts in this. It revs up slowly as if it was a rotary revving up to nine K. Right then, it's so coming down the back straight here. Um, it's definitely not that fast of a time, I don't think. It's going to have to do absolute miracles. This might actually be one of the worst cars we've used so far. At least with the uh, rotary. At least with the rotary. But I did I expect it to be that good again from the start? No, not really. It's, it's the best drift car in the game. If it was also the best race car in the game, there would be a little bit of shenanigans. I'm not going to lie. It's not like it's not a respectable time though. We're going down to the back straight here. Final lap. Just about to hit a three minutes. It's not exactly awful either. Coming across the line there with a 305. 305.62. So where does that make it land? Okay, so the RX-7 landed just above the Evo 9. Still faster than an Evo 9. So, you know, we're going to retest the Evo because a lot of people want me to retest the Evo with, with a different setup. But uh, yeah, it's kind of good. But not really that good. What I'd recommend this car for is night time once they actually give it a purpose. So if you're going for a high rep, you know, night run, you can kind of easily switch out the drift parts, do drift zones and drift events. And then you can put the race parts in and then do race parts. That's what I think this car is really, really good for. Like I said, the RX-7, we ain't done with it. If you guys want to see it, uh, what I'll do is I'll start a kind of Gary-like series with the drift cars and... Well, this car will be back, maybe with a different Pro Street livery, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, that's been it for me today. If you guys enjoyed, if you did, hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace.